But now he's like, he's not even giving any pushback. Getting like some of society's worst villains. This is the exact opposite of Elon Musk. People on the internet love Elon Musk. All right, let's look at Zuckerberg. The Joe Rogan experience. When we take down something that that we're not supposed to, I mean, that that is like, uh, I, I mean, that's the worst. Remember, fun fact, but Mark Zuckerberg quite literally said Holocaust revisionism, the single best indicator that someone is a actual out and about Nazi is appropriate on his platform. Remember when he said this while people were talking about Facebook's own involvement in the ongoing genocide of Rohingya Muslims, okay, in Myanmar. Facebook quite literally, and this is well documented, played a role on WhatsApp in the dissemination of misinformation that led to the genocide of Muslims in Myanmar. I mean, how that's do you like discern like how like say like these christian facebook pages I, I don't know how they found out that 19 of 20 were fake but if someone just says i am bob smith and mm -hmm. they post as bob smith and they have a photograph and they but really what they're doing is trying to uh talk shit about joe biden and get people to vote republican in the midterms like how what how do you know whether someone's real or not like this is the big argument with elon mm -hmm. and twitter because Elon asked Twitter, like, what percentage of your yeah. website is filled with bots? And they say 5%. And he says, I don't believe you. I think it's higher. And let's find out how you've come to this conclusion. Yeah. And, you know, they're, uh, I believe they said that they just took 100 random Twitter pages and looked at the interaction and there's some sort of yeah. an algorithm they applied to it. But how do you discern? Yeah. So, I mean, I think estimating the overall prevalence is is one thing but i think that the question of you know looking at a page and it bro am i crazy or does mark zuckerberg look surprisingly more human right now it's kind of surprising oh you heard uh ludwig talk about the the uh genocide in myanmar oh that's that's crazy i yeah he, he's my favorite political commentator that's where i get all my talking points is from. this page authentic i think that there's a bunch of signals around that one of the things that we try to do is for large pages we try to make sure that we know who the admin of that page is. We don't necessarily, if you should be able to run an anonymous page. You don't necessarily need to out yourself and say who you are running it. But we want to make sure that we sort of have like an identity for that person on file. So that way we know, it, it, like at least behind the scenes, that that person is real. Um, for certain political things, I think having a sense of what country they're originating from. I mean, some of that you can do just by looking at where their server traffic comes from, like is the IP address coming from Romania or, you know, is, or, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because if, it, if it's like an ad in some other country's election, then, you know, you probably want to make sure that that ad is, is, um, you know, especially in countries that have laws around that are, are like, are coming from someone who's a valid citizen or like yeah. at least in that place. So there, there's a bunch of, I think, I don't know, one, one theme in my worldview around this stuff, when it gets to some of the stuff that we talked about before, is like, I don't think that this stuff is black and white or that you're ever going to have like a perfect AI system. Um, I think it's all trade-offs all the way down, right? And it's, and and you, you could either, you could build a system and you can either be overly aggressive and capture a higher percent of the bad guys, but then also by accident take out some number of good guys, or you could be a little more lenient and... Um, say, okay, no, the cost of taking out any number of good guys is too high, so we're going to tolerate having, you know, just a, a little bit more, uh, like, more bad guys on the on the system. These are values questions, right, right. around what what do you value more? Um, and and those are those are super tricky questions. And part of what I've struggled with around this is I didn't get into this to basically judge those things. I got into this to design technology that helps people connect, right? It's like, mm -hmm. and and like, the, I mean, you could probably tell when we spent the first hour talking about the metaverse and the future of basically building this whole technology roadmap to basically give people this realistic sense of presence. It's like, that's what I'm here to do, right? Um, so this whole thing that's like arbitrating what is okay and what is not, I, I obviously have to be involved in that because this is at some level, you know, I run the company and, um, 
and I, I can't just abdicate that. But but I, I also don't think that as a matter of governance, you want all of that decision making vested in one individual. So I think one of the things that you know our country and our government gets right is the separation of powers. So you know one of the things that I tried to create is we created this oversight board. It's an independent board where, that basically we, we appointed people whose kind of paramount value is free expression, but they also val- balance that with things like when is there going to... Yeah, that's why they fucking work with a Heritage Foundation to like moderate content. Even before conservatives started complaining about fucking uh, right-wing content not getting enough traction. If, you, if you're wondering why Daily Wire pops off so fucking hard on Facebook, contrary to what uh, Republicans claim is happening because like every time you look at news, every time you look at news, they're always making it seem like Republicans are not getting any fucking, uh, they're not getting enough clout. Oh yeah. No, here, here. Page 14. Fundamental freedoms, the mission examined Myanmar authorities. The role of social media is significant. Facebook has been a useful instrument in, in those seeking to spread hate in a context where for most users, Facebook is the internet. Although improved in recent months, the response of Facebook has been slow and ineffective. The extent to which Facebook posts and messages have led to the real world discrimination and violence must be independently and thoroughly examined. The mission regrets that Facebook is unable to provide country specific data about the spread of hate speech on its platform, which is imperative to assess the adequacy of its response. This is a report from the Independent International Fact-Finding Mission on Myanmar by the Human Rights Council. Like, they they just straight up are like, Facebook played a role? We just don't know how bad it was. How wild. It's going to be real harm to others um, in terms of safety or privacy or other other human rights issues. And, And basically, that board, people in our community can appeal cases to when they think that we got it wrong. And that board actually gets to make the final binding decision, not us. So in a way, I actually think that that is a more legitimate form of governance than having just a team internally that makes these decisions or, you know, maybe some of them go up to me, although I don't spend a ton of my time on on, on this on a day-to-day basis. But like, I think it's generally good to have some kind of separation of powers where you're architecting the governance so that way... You, you have different stakeholders and different people who can make these decisions. And it's not just like one private company that's making um, decisions even about what just happens on our platform. How do you guys handle things when they're a, a big news item that's controversial? Like there was a lot of attention on Twitter during the election because of the Hunter Biden laptop story. The New yeah, York we Post. had that too. Yeah, so you guys censored that as well? So we took a different path than Twitter. Um, I mean, basically, the background here is the FBI, I think, basically came to us, uh, some some folks on our team. It was like, hey, um, just so you know, like, you should be on high alert. There was the, – we, we thought that there was a lot of Russian propaganda in the 2016 election. We have it on notice that basically there's about to be some kind of dump of, of – um, uh, uh, that's similar to that. So just be vigilant. So – our protocol is different from Twitter's. What Twitter did is they said, you can't share this at all. Um, we didn't do that. What, what we do is we have, um, if something is reported to us as potentially um, misinformation, important misinformation, we, we also have this third-party fact-checking program because we don't want to be deciding what's true and false. And for the, I think it was five or seven days when it was basically being um, being determined whether it was false, um, the distribution on Facebook was decreased, but people were still allowed to share it. So you could still share it. You could still consume it. So when um, you say the distribution is decreased, in, it, it got shared. How it, does that work? It basically the ranking in newsfeed was a little bit less. So fewer people saw it than would have otherwise. So it definitely by what percentage? I, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's 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 meaningful. But I mean, but basically a. Um, a lot of people were still able to share it. We got a lot of complaints that that was the case. Um, you know, obviously this is a hyper political issue. So depending on what side of the political spectrum, you either think we didn't censor it enough or censored it way too much. But right. but we weren't sort of as black and white about it as as Twitter. We just kind of thought, hey, look, if if the FBI, which you know, I still 
view as a legitimate institution in this country. It's a very professional law enforcement. They come to us and tell us that we need to be on guard about something, then I want to take that seriously. Did they specifically say you need to be on guard about that story? I, I, no, I, I don't remember if it was that specifically, but it was. it basically fit the pattern. When something like that turns out to be real, is there regret for not having it evenly distributed and for throttling the distribution of that story? What do you mean evenly distributed? I mean uh, evenly in that it's not suppressed. It's not. How does he not remember? Like that's crazy. Yeah, Some... yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, it turned out after the fact. I mean, the fact checkers looked into it. No one was able to say it was false, right? So, so basically, it had this period where it was getting list distribution. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I but I think like. I think it probably, it sucks though, I think in the same way that probably having to go through like a criminal trial, but being proven innocent in the end sucks. Like it still sucks to have, have like that you had to go through a criminal trial, but at the end you're free. Um, so it's, I, I, I don't know if the answer would have been. He's too busy building his dream life in metaverse. Yeah. With like 1998 graphics, dude. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Don't do anything or don't have any process. I think the process was pretty reasonable you know it's we still let people share it but but obviously you don't want situations like that but certainly much more reasonable than twitter stance and it's probably also the case of armchair quarterbacking right or at least monday morning quarterbacking i should say because in the moment you had reason to believe based on the fbi talking to you that it wasn't real and that there was going to be some propaganda so what do you do yeah and then if you just let it get out there and what if it he's like genocide aiding and abetting uh through not moderating misinformation in an ongoing genocide hunter biden's laptop story hmm who what should i ask the fucking ceo one of the most powerful people on the fucking planet about yeah probably the hunter biden laptop thing that's that's what i should ask him about that's seems like way way more important uh, way more important subjects to cover. Changes the election and it turns out to be bullshit. That's a real problem. And I would imagine that those kind of decisions are the most difficult. The decisions of like what is allowed and what is not allowed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what would you do in that situation? I don't know what I would do. I would have to like really thoroughly, well, first of all, you're dealing with the New York Post, which is one of the oldest newspapers in the country. So I would I would say uh, I would want to talk to someone uh, from the New York Post and I would say how did you come up with this data like where where are you getting the information from how do you know whether or not this is correct and then you have to make a decision because they might have got duped it's it's very it's hard because everybody wants to look at it after the fact now yeah. that we know that the Laptop was real and then it was a legitimate story and there there is potential corruption involved with him What we 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 think oh that should not have been restricted that should not have been banned from sharing on Twitter Right. I, I think everybody agrees with that even the Tucker Carlson tweet the Andrew Tate thing I know it's uh, it's gonna be on soon Did he tweet again? No, Andrew Tate hates tap water. He talks exclusively to Tucker at 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox News. Okay, well, we're not doing that yet. Even Twitter agreed with that. But the thing is, then they didn't yeah. think that. In the beginning, they thought... But yeah, that fucking... That, that debate, which you can barely fucking call a debate, let's be real. That one was so bad for him. It went so poorly for him that, like, most people don't even... Most people don't even try to do the, uh -huh, you platformed him too bullshit. Like, some people try and do it, but... Is this the reality where Tucker's now supporting a sex trafficker rapist? What do you mean, dude? That reality is not any different than the reality yesterday. <laughs> I didn't even have him on my stream either. So there's Thought that. it was fake. So what do they do? Like yeah. if something comes along and the Republicans cook up some scheme to make it look like Joe Biden's a terrible person and they only do it so that they can win the election, but it's really just propaganda. What do you... What are you supposed to do with that? You're supposed to not allow that to be distributed. So if they think that's the case, it makes sense to me that they would try to stop it. But I just don't think that they looked at it hard enough. When the New York Post is talking about it, you know, they're pretty smart about what they release and what they don't release. If they're, do, if they're going over some 
data from a laptop and you could talk to a person but again like this is just one story like one individual story like how many of these pop up every day especially in regards to polarizing issues like climate change or covid or or you know foreign policy or ukraine anytime there's like a really controversial issue where some people think that it's imperative that you take a very specific stance and you can't have the other stance mm -hmm. like that those moments on social media those trouble a lot of people because yeah. they don't know why certain things get censored or certain things get promoted yeah i i agree and it's like uh, to be in your spot and i was one of the things that i really wanted to talk to you about is this because like to be in your spot must be insanely difficult to have no matter what decision you make you're gonna have a giant chunk of people that are upset at you and there might be a right way to handle it but i don't know what the fuck right way is well i think the right way is to establish principles for governance that try to be balanced and not have the decision making too centralized because mm -hmm. i think that it's hard for people to to accept that like some team at meta or that I personally am making all these decisions. And I think people should be skeptical about any like, so much concentration around that. So that's why a lot of the innovation that I've tried to push for in governance is around things like establishing this oversight board. So that way you have people who are luminaries around expression um, from all over the world. But I think he's going to forget. I think Mark Zuckerberg or not Mark Zuckerberg. I think Joe Rogan doesn't understand that like coming along and like agreeing with yeah, see? Dude, Joe Rogan experience, I'm calling it. Here's my lock. Yesterday's interview with the CIA guy, today's interview with Mark Zuckerberg, people are going to start saying Joe is inauthentic. He just lets like a lot of these villains do PR on his broadcast, which is what a lot of people consider inauthentic about mainstream media as well. I think his audience is going to start fucking yelling at him about this shit. Because like, remember... When he has right-wingers on to, like, promote right-wing values and whatever, they're edgy. They're oftentimes, like, actually being blocked by, uh, you know, mainstream media. They're, like, not libtards. Uh, so that's seen as, like, sticking it to the man. But now he's, like, he's not even giving any pushback. He's getting, like, some of society's worst villains. This is the exact opposite of Elon Musk. People on the internet love Elon Musk. Okay, they love soy facing at Elon Musk. So when he did that interview with Elon Musk, everyone fucking lost their shit. Zuckerberg is the exact opposite. People hate Zuckerberg. What's next? Is he going to have Bill Gates on? Podcast guests are paying up to $50,000 to appear on popular shows. Yeah. I mean, his subreddit is already like kind of opposed to him since COVID. His Reddit already hates him, so that doesn't count. His Reddit is like me, people that want to love him but can't because he constantly is just like awful. But there's the nostalgia element of like old Joe Rogan that uh, they want a return to. And that's why they like immediately go crazy whenever Joe has like another guest that rem that is reminiscent of that. But anyway, my point is Mark Zuckerberg, villain. Nobody likes Mark. Nobody. So when he has like a CIA guy, when he has a CIA guy on to speak out against Donald Trump and like kind of defend the FBI, people are going to be like, hmm, that's weird. Why is Joe Rogan having a CIA guy? CIA is not that good, right? I mean, I thought the CIA was bad. Now he's having Mark Zuckerberg on. I don't know. But also in, in, the, in the U.S., um, you know, I mean, folks like Michael McConnell, who's, I mean, is a Stanford professor who's like... Just he, he was I, I forget which um was it, which Republican president appointed him, but I mean he was uh, I think going to be considered for the Supreme Court at some point. I mean he's he's, he's a very um very prominent and and, and kind of celebrated um, free expression advocate, and he helped me set the thing up. <laughs> Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago maid. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Every now and then, there's a dumbass username that still gets me, okay? And that's... <laughs> that one was... That's a good name. And, 
I, I think like the beauty of GRE is that he tries to keep his tries his best to keep his platform unbiased, which is extremely rare nowadays. Yeah, dude, Joe Rogan, totally unbiased and definitely not an out of touch wealthy guy. Who, especially since moving over to fucking Austin, has become like a full blown right wing crank. Setting up forms of governance around that are independent of us, that basically get the final say on a bunch of these decisions. Um, and that's that's a step in the right direction. I mean, in in the the Hunter Biden case that you talked about before, yeah, you know, I don't want our company to decide what's misinformation and what's not. So when we work with with third parties and basically let different different organizations do that. Now, I mean, then you have the question of are those organizations biased or not? And that's that's a that's a very difficult question. But at least we're not the ones who are basically sitting here deciding. We're not the Ministry of Truth for the world that's deciding right. whether everything is true or not. So I'd say. Um, this is not a solved problem. Controversies aren't going away. Um, you know, I think that there's... It, it is interesting that the U.S. Um, is actually more polarized... Am I crazy or does this interview suck? I guess it's like, because Mark is just so boring. Like, he has the personality of a fucking wet blanket. And, and he's just, like, doing the political... Like, he cranked his AI mode to, like, politics mode. Mark is so much better when he's uh Mark is so much better when he's on smoking meats mode. When he puts the AI into smoking meats mode, he is so much more fun. Facebook Oversight Board says post critiquing RSS BJP highlights minority concern allows it. Upon its review of the post, which included the video and the oversight board says its decision to remove it was not in line with Facebook's community standards. Wait, what? RSS is a new threat and the ruling uh BJP has moved towards extremism has been deemed as not in violation of the social media platform's policy. Wait, well, okay. The RSS was threatening to kill six, and the Prime Minister Modi himself was formulating the great genocide of six on advice. Okay. Wait, I'm confused. That should not have been taken down. Yes. That's a good thing. Why did you fucking literally post this in here? Did you think that I was going to agree with you? Chatter, do you think I'm a fan of the BJP? What's going on? Did I misunderstand? Xi Jinping Agitprop Fund. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Wait, who sent this to me? I'm trying to figure out what this fucking person is saying. Heck, that was classic sick lol. Brother, I don't know if you just like Googled Facebook. Facebook is unhinged in India. Facebook is probably unhinged in India, but this is the one time where they did the right thing. So I don't know why you brought this up. Schrodinger's cussy. Thank you, Schrodinger's cussy. Oh my God, he's talking about myocarditis. Then, than most other countries. So I think sitting in the U.S. Megaphonic, stop sending me the fucking boring 420 uh, link, please. I got it. You like weed, okay? 420. It's easy to extrapolate and say, hey, it probably feels this way around the whole world. Um, and from the social science research that I've seen, that's not actually the case. There's a bunch of countries where social media is just as prominent, but polarization is either flat or has declined slightly. So there's something kind of different happening in the U.S. Hmm. Um, but but for better or worse, I mean, it, it does seem like 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 the the next several years do seem like they're set up to be quite polarized. So I I tend to agree with you. There are going to be a bunch of different decisions like this that that come up um, because of the scale of what we do. Almost every major world event has some angle that's like the Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp angle um, about how the services are, are used in it. So, yeah, I think just establishing as much as possible independent governance. If you're guaranteed to get on the show, would you pay for the kid to get on, Jerry? No, fuck no, dude. What are you fucking saying? You should have me on for free. Joe Rogan has had people with like significantly less fucking. Uh, clout and significantly less like social media movement than someone like myself you would s his d lol absolutely not actually yes i would i would suck his cock please have me on there you go i wouldn't suck his cock but i would suck his nipples and i've said that before before there was any sort of um before there was any sort of uh uh you know joe rogan invite at play here i would suck his extremely long nipples Num, 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 num. Also, you would have other stuff you can do with streaming in Austin. It's a win-win. Yeah. 
He has the longest nipples of all time, brother. I would want to be in the room with those uh, with those shits.